Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Tuesday again. Hoping you are reading your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. And I hope it's working. I hope you do that. Matter of fact, I hope you don't just read it. I hope you live it. We're in a generation right now that is up against all kind of woke theology hitting the local church and Christians and Protestant thinking. Uh, when you have a Protestant religion where there's so many denominations and so many people in charge of themselves, you can basically believe anything you want to believe and just tag the name of Jesus to it and you'll be okay. However, the church of Jesus Christ from the resurrection of Jesus, man, we have a mission to live boldly to proclaim the everlasting gospel, uncompromised gospel. And it's not about whether... I believe it or like it or not, it is what it is. It is truth, infallible truth. And so we bring ourselves to the Bible to live it. That means if you do read it and you do decide to live it, it will always challenge you at some point along the way. It will always probably disagree with your humanity or your emotions or your feelings because the Bible really doesn't care in the truth that it gives you about your feelings. It cares about your eternity and what God has placed in your heart. This is what I want to share with you today. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is the, uh, just read the whole chapter. It's a, it's a really, really good chapter that's challenging. It's like 22 verses long, but it is my favorite. It, I know if you followed me here, you've heard it. It's my favorite verse of the Bible is located in there. As a matter of fact, I have it tattooed on my arm right there, this whole tattoo is simply based on the scripture. So here it is. I'm going to read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 9. And it reads on through verse 11. What do people really get for all their hard work? I've seen the burden God placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. God has put eternity in your heart. There's a scope. There's a time frame he's working in. It says this, that God makes all things beautiful within the scope of time. Starting this Sunday at Believer's Church, right here where the wall is, I'm going to be doing a whole series called Give It Time of how we as humans are to identify and have faith in an eternal God. How does a temporal being Put their faith in the eternal God. It's very frustrating. I'm going to teach you how to do that. Teach you how to endure a, a set of time believing for beautiful because when we get stuck in time, it just is a mess. If you ever want to watch what time will do to somebody, uh, man, just look around you. Look what time has done to America. In 1776, we broke from the crown and we, yay, we championed, uh, we are independent, the land of the free, the home of the brave. You know, here we are, 2022, some several, almost 300 years later, and man, we are far beyond where we started. And we're trying to fight the, you know, the course of human history here of just craziness. So look at what time will do. Time will even make you better or bitter. Time will make you worse. Uh, time literally tells what's been planted in you. If you want to know what you're made out of, give yourself time. If you want to know what your marriage is made out of, give yourself time. If you want to know what you are made out of, it's definitely not going to be revealed in a church service or a worship set if you listen to your favorite Maverick City song. You, we will not know you uh, in a three-minute time frame. You may cry during that song. You may say, oh my God, this song just totally man, blows my life away. I love it. I, I get close to God with this song. Well, that's great. But if we really want to know somebody, time. I always say this, you know, pleasantly joking, but, but I do mean it at the same time. You want to know who I am? Hang out with me. I'm not faking anything. I have nothing to fake. I have good days and bad days. I have days that where my feelings try to take over. I have days where I, you've heard me. I, I, I want to pout. Uh, and I just have to work through all that. I just have to go. I can't let, I can't let time, uh, a new day, uh, mess this thing up here. So this Sunday at Believers, I'm going to be teaching uh, how a whole series on called Give It Time based off this text. So uh, you may, if you follow me on my own personal Instagram uh, this week on the beach, 
I took a week off with the fam and we went down to the beach. And so I did nothing like purposely. If a human being can do nothing, I achieved it. Get up every day, ride a bicycle, get a coffee, ride a bicycle to the beach, sit on the beach, ride a bicycle to a little uh, sandwich shop, ride the bicycle back to the beach, nothing. I mean, sit by the pool, nothing. It was fun, but nothing in the sense of I just didn't let my brain go to a bunch of all the stuff I've got to deal with in life. I just wanted to chill out. Well, in that, I noticed how I wanted to be more intentional with some things. So, because sometimes it says, even in this verse, that God makes everything beautiful in its time. And sometimes we can get such in a hurry that we just miss cool stuff or stuff that's meaningful or stuff that could be intriguing. So I made a decision at the top of the week. I think we got there like Saturday night. I made a decision on Sunday walking through the neighborhood that I was going to be very intentional with things I notice that that are just different or or I would notice them in the past and just kind of breeze by it I, I wouldn't really stop to muse over it and ponder it and so I decided to do that just take pictures I'm still doing that today I got home and thought you know just random things that I normally would walk by because I'm in a hurry I normally would just scoot by the person or drive past the tree or the sign that I drive past every single day, but I never really even know what it says. I just decided, uh, hey, I'm growing older. I want to I wanna end being more intentional about the beauty. So that's what I challenge you with today. I challenge you, if God is making all things beautiful in his time, then I challenge you not to get so busy about time and so distracted by time that you miss the beauty. Don't get so distracted with your life and what you have to do today that you miss the beauty of who you love, the person, your, your soulmate, who you're spending time with, the beauty of your children, even a mess on the floor. Hey, before you lose it, why don't you take a picture of it? Find the beauty in it. Uh, before you get, you know, I got caught in a traffic jam coming into the gym today, this morning. I was like, oh, God, a traffic jam. But you know what? I thought, nah. I'm just going to take my picture out sitting here still. I'm just going to shoot a picture of something. I'm going to notice the beauty rather than the pain. So that's my challenge for you today on the Bible Reading Project. Take time to slow down, look around, and in everyday simple routine things, take a moment to enjoy the beauty because you're only given a certain amount of time on this earth. How silly to waste it on all the things that aren't beautiful. Have a good day. I'll see you soon.